welcome to the Truth Broadcast today. I am your teacher of the truth, C.J. Lester, and I am here today to uh, teach you, or not really preach to you, but teach you uh, about why, or I'm going to give you 24 reasons why hell is real. This is not a touchy-feely good sermon, but it's reality. And for today's time, if that is what we need. Uh, some false teachers today would like us to think that everybody will eventually go to heaven. Do not believe them, because that is what is not what the Bible teaches. I'm going to share with you some of the truths that the Bible does teach. William Booth, a fa the founder of Salvation Army, a man who dedicated his life to lifting up the poor and getting them out of sin and poverty, reportedly made this comment. He said most Christian organizations would like to send their workers to Bible school or Bible college for five years. I would like to send our workers to hell for at least five minutes. That will prepare them for a lifetime of compassionate ministry. Booth never suggested that the despite our desperate people would serve where are already in hell. He believed in a real internal hell. And it drove him to rescue people from both their current polite and future prediction. Shortly after his death in 1912, Booth warned prophetically that he saw a coming of the church, or coming, saw coming to the church. Forgiveness without repentance, and salvation without regeneration, and a heaven without hell. That is the state of the church today. They believe without repentance, so if we don't have repentance, then what's the need for the church? And also in today's theological, theological fog, his anonymous uh, caveat is unfolding. Even some who claim to believe the Bible are having second thoughts about eternal judgment. Why? Because they are easily and persuadedly uh, persuaded out of the faith. Because they didn't have the roots. They didn't have the right training from the beginning, so they are easily swayed by false teachers. And others who are rejecting the notion of the judgment altogether. The name usually given to this teaching is universalism. Universalism basically is the belief that all people will be saved. Uh, Jesus' death and resurrection will automatically, or at least eventually, save the whole human race. Personal repentance and faith in Christ are not necessary for going to heaven. The Christian mission is reduced to an announcing to people that the good news that they are already saved. But does Scripture teach that? Or does Scripture teach that everyone will be saved? There is an overwhelming biblical evidence to say the contrary. These are the 24 reasons to reject universalism. And you may be able to add a few after this video. But Jesus, number one, is Jesus made both repentance and faith uh, necessary for forgiveness. Unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Luke 13, 3. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Mark 1, 15. Number two, the water of life. He is offered to all but not all received it or even desired it. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Revelation 22, 17. Number three, the scripture teaches that there will be a judgment after death. And it is appointed for men to once to die and then the judgment. Hebrews 9, 27. And then number four, those who have not had a true conversion will experience judgment for sin that the Bible describes as the second death. But 
the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars shall have all their part in the lake of which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death in Revelation 21.8. I am going to do a whole study of this, uh, the second death. Uh, I'm going through some teachings right now, so it will be a video later on. But uh, I'm, it's in Revelations, and it talks about the lake of fire. Uh, hell is separate than the lake of fire. But let's continue with this. I don't want to get into the detail of all that. But number five is, contrary to universalist beliefs, Jesus' teaching indicates that most of humanity is on broad path that leads to destruction. Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I will say, will seek to enter and will not be able. When, when once the master of the house risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and knock the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us, and he will answer and say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. Luke chapter 13, verses 24 through 27. Number six. Jesus spoke after the terrible place of judgment for those outside of his kingdom rule. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out his kingdom and all things that offend. And those who practice lawlessness will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be a wailing and gnashing of teeth. That is found in Matthew chapter 13, verses 41 and 42. Number seven, the Bible teaches that uh, both the love of God and His sure judgment of sin. Trusting in Christ's payment for our sin saves us from the coming judgment. In Romans 8, 5, Romans 5, 8 through 9 says, But God demonstrates His own love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having the new been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. Number eight. In one of his most loving verses in the Bible, Jesus issues eternal options. John 3.16, we all know this when it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Number nine. Scripture teaches that there is an unending uh, eternal judgment for those who do not know God, and who do not respond in faith of the gospel. The Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven and with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. 2 Thessalonians 1 7 through 9. Number 10. Jesus emphatically thought, taught that a spiritual birth is essential for entering in the kingdom of heaven. And uh, the, He was talking to Nicodemus here and he's uh, talking about salvation and Nicodemus is wondering how to get into the kingdom of heaven. He said in John 3.3 3, that most assuredly I say unto you unless you are born again you cannot see the kingdom of God. Number 11. In answer to a very clear question about what is necessary for salvation, Paul gave a very clear answer. In Acts 16.31 it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Number 12. Jesus gave no indications that many roads lead to God. Let me repeat that. Jesus gave no indication that other roads or many roads lead to God. He forcefully stated that he is the only way. In John 14, 6, he states himself that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. The early preachers of the church clearly preached that Jesus is the only way to salvation. Nor there is a salvation in any other. For there is no other name which is given unto under heaven among which men may be saved. And according to Scripture, only those who receive Jesus Christ and believe in Him and are the children of God. 
uh, John 1 12 states that for it is by the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. Or for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Rather than teaching that those without faith in Christ are already saved, the Bible teaches that they are already under judgment. Faith in Christ brings us out of condemnation and into a right relationship with God. John 3.18 states that he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Only those whose names are in the Lamb's Book of Life are granted access into the eternal city of God. Revelations 20.15 and also Revelations 21 verse 27 says, And anyone who is not found written in the Book of Life was cast into the lake of fire. People are not uh, automatically righteous. God, only when we declare faith in Jesus Christ does God declare His righteousness in His sight. Romans 4, 5 says, But he, but to him who does not work, but believes on him and justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Eternal life comes only through the relationship with God. We cannot know the Father unless we know the Son. John 17, 3 states, And this is eternal life, that they may know you and the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom I have sent. The cross of Christ is where the payment of our sins were made. Only when we believe in this, we are saved. And when Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, and uh, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up in a cross, or on a cross, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Only those who have the Son of God have eternal life. Acts 10 and 11 provides evidence against universalism. Cornelius was a devout, often pr prayed often, gave generously to the poor, and even received an angelic visitation. Yet God went to great lengths to get the gospel to him, and he could not come to know Jesus and be saved. Added to the avalanches of script scriptural evidence, there are only practical reasons for rejecting universalism. History teaches that ex uh, acceding to universalism sets the church on a slippery slide toward theological liberalism. Soon all confidence in scriptural is lost and the uniqueness of the Christian gospel evaporates. If we embrace universalism, there is no urgency to infantilize or to imperative uh, to do missions. In fact, evangelism and missions would have to be reformed. We need to look further than most of the mainline denominations to see what happened to evangelism when universalism is prevalent. If universalism is finally proved right, nothing would be have would have been lost by our continued urgency in winning people of the faith in Christ. But if it is false and we embrace it, then everything will be forever lost, including people who do not know Christ. It is to be said clearly that God's character is not on trial. The judge of the earth will do what is right. In Genesis 18.25, our faith is on trial. Our hearts are on trial, but God not on trial. Whatever judgment he makes regarding those who have not responded to the gospel will be ex executed according to his standards of equality, perfect righteousness, and love. When we ponder God's mercy, the whole issue is averted because God is perfect, perfectly holy. The wonder is that not all of some will be lost. 
the greater wonder is the uh, anyone from rebellious humanity will not be saved or will be saved. Only Christ's work on the cross could reconcile us to God. God has put down the most massive roadblock possibly to stop humanity and rush toward hell. He sent his son. God inverted me personally through Christ. His sacrifice on the cross paid the penalty for our sins. This is the good news for all who believes and receives him. Espousing, which is meant to support, support uh, universally, universalism is sad, but rejecting it with no impact in our hearts or change in our priorities is, is sinister. If we believe that people are lost outside of Christ, which they are, and that faith in Christ is the only way of salvation, and it is, what could possibly, possibly be a higher priority than getting the gospel out as far as we can and as fast as we can? To pronounce people saved who are obviously enslaved by darkness, deception, and the devil is surely the cruelest of jokes. We are sent to a lost world without a gospel of, or with a gospel of power. Our message gives the spiritual blind their sight and liberates those who are chained by Satan. We do not preach that people are forgiven, but that they can be forgiven. I would not want to stand before Jesus Christ as a universalist, but neither would I want to stand before the Lord as an evangelical who, or uh, evangelical who was not evangelical. What a serious account must be await for us if we believe in eternal torment for those without faith in Christ, and yet do nothing. A recovery of biblical truth and compassionate evangelism is the twin streaming needs of the American church. The Apostle Paul said he would be willing to give up his place in Christ if by which his sacrifice others would be saved. He believed all people outside of Christ were lost and that left him with a broken heart. More than encroaching, uh, encroaching universalism is our broken hearts that often impede uh, evangelism. Many Christians today have never even heard of the burden for the lost. The harvest is huge and ready for the uh, reaped, or ready to be reaped by those who are willing to sow first in tears. But that's why we need to spread the gospel. And the gospel is still needing to be heard. Many roads do not lead to Christ. There's only one way. And that is through Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That is the only way to be saved from your sin. Your sin is a stumbling block to God. He wants your whole heart to uh, living for Him. So, if you would like to live for Him today, please bow your head and say this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today as a sinner. I pray that you will forgive me of my sins. I pronounce you now as the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that you rose and that you are coming again in victory of her sin and death. I thank you for your death on your cross and that I am now saved from eternal hell. Thank you, Jesus. And God, thank you for sending your Son. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, I pray that you will go to my website, cjlester.weebly.com. Uh, let me know and I will rejoice in you. But God be with you. And like I said, I'll be doing some more teachings on the lake of fire, hell. And uh, once I get ready for that, I will bring it to you. But thank you for letting me come into your home today. And thank you for listening. Uh, 
like, subscribe, and share uh, to my videos on YouTube and Facebook. I'll put the links down below. Stop by my website and let me know what you think. Thank you and God bless and have a wonderful day.